Hey, what is going on YouTube? Hey, Aaron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are in the JG... Call JG Wentworth 877 Cash <laughs> Sorry to everyone who is now going to have that stuck in their head all day. If you had cable television in the early 2000s, then you know exactly what that commercial is. And if you're not from America, well, enjoy a little bit of uh, commercial capitalism there. But today we are in the JG Mar Marker, Marker, the tier 7 of the new German Renaissance or Heavy Destroyer line to come to War Warships Legends in this update. They are definitely more gun-focused and not the most effective destroyers, but you couple that with a, a little gun build and kind of getting some broadsides in this AP with these 150 millimeter guns can absolutely slap. As always, stats and commander guide at the end of the video. I'm probably not running the most effective build on this. It's a little bit different than my Elbing build, which is the tier 10 to this line on PC, so I'm not exactly sure if they're going to have a legendary tier, but the tier 8 and the Elbing are fantastic cruiser killers. If you can get the broadsides, I have absolutely decimated a few Minos and, and Des Moines even uh, at legendary tier with the Elbing. So getting broadsides and, and kind of positioning yourself well, which is can be said for most ships, but especially these. But anyway, let's go ahead and get right into the strategy. We are located here and we are moving into the cap. We can also see that our twist and track, which is that half gray circle, is sort of a little bit ahead of the Georgia. So that is why we launch our torps. We also use this island here on trap as a little bit of torpedo cover, right? That island there would actually block a few torpedoes. And as Neezer, he is a viewer and a friend of the channel, is on the enemy team, he throws some pretty well, uh, you know, aimed zoning torps there. If we would not have been potentially paying attention or utilizing this island, we could have eaten one of those. And one of the weaknesses in this boat and, and this line is your maneuverability. Uh, you don't have the best maneuverability nor the best top speed. You're like, like we've said, you're basically a light cruiser without a citadel. But you couple that with Sims, I think, is on this build, and you can get yourself, as you can see, almost up to thirty thousand health at tier seven in a destroyer. And you know, compared to some tier six ships like this York, you're almost matching them in terms of of certain health. And on top of that, the York has a pretty decent sized citadel, as he is about to quickly find out. But already you can see that we have a solo cap, so still, you know, you still need to fulfill your role in a destroyer, and build dependent, you may have worse concealment. I chose not to run uh, mortar, which kind of worsens your concealment and doesn't allow for you to choose look at me now or whatever that... Uh, con you know, concealment perk is in that second or third slot there. So we are missing a little bit in terms of the gun performance. We also don't have Yamato or Yamamoto or, you know, maybe a Von Essen for something for the AP. But yeah, as you can see right here, what was that? Four or five thousand damage with a five second reload. And you are absolutely going to be hurting cruisers who are not paying attention. The reason I mention that, however, though, is we do have a decent concealment in this game. I think it's 5.4, which is pretty, you know, average or, or good uh, if you're not running a more gun focused build so if you do decide to run the gun focused build just you know remember that you still have a role to fulfill in a destroyer and and that requires getting the cap but as you can see even without really a true gun focused build uh, we are absolutely obliterating uh, this New York here. We fired four, five, six salvos, and we have a kill and nearly 15,000 damage without taking a single point of damage. Now, the York was a part of the paid actor fund, so, <laughs> um, you know, you want to put yourself in a position, you know, either utilizing your smoke or angling out to try and take the least amount of damage possible. But as we mentioned, with your health pool, you are able to attract a little bit more damage as this, as we will demonstrate here, as this Georgia actually gets two good overpens. So paying attention to your positioning, utilizing your smoke, here's a situation where that Georgia is going to get focused, you know, by the majority of our team, and this spawn isn't necessarily the best as the center spawns face away from each other, which usually leads to a six on three, or in this case with a carrier five on, you know, five on three. But um, so wasting a smoke there, you, you want to make sure that you're utilizing your utility as necessary. But again, here's just a little just something to help your situational awareness and everything we have the located symbol and we have our twist and track out there and that is where the other destroyer is mr neezer was on the weak side so he did the intelligent thing and not push in and he's trying to relocate and help his team as best as possible and as a result of me not wanting to push into the enemy backfield we're going to go ahead and push into the bravo cap here people it's 
I, I still don't understand how players do not understand that getting the capture points is a surefire way to set up yourself to get a lot of damage. A lot of players, I think, just think this game is primarily focused around damage. And don't get me wrong, as someone who just hit 80,000 average damage, I absolutely love and adore getting those high damage games. And sometimes people ask me, hey Aaron, how do you do that? Well, I put my ship in the right position, I try and focus on the caps, and I look at getting crossfires. Last night, I think the first game on stream, we had like eight players all in the same square and if you think about it the enemy players are just going to angle or bow tank to that square if they have obviously the appropriate armor to do so so make sure you're spreading out getting your caps creating crossfires and just overall playing the game in a manner which is more than just point click shoot i saw a post on facebook the other day and granted facebook is definitely not the uh best place to go for information or insights on legends or anything really but uh it said yeah i sail in formation because that's how proper naval tactic tactic oh, and, and i get it like proper naval tactics but this is not a this is an arcade shooter yes it's got a lot of historical value which is something i enjoy in this game but anyway let's move on uh, but speaking of that the whole point behind that was we have now gotten two caps in the opening moments and that is very important i want you to pay attention to that towards the end of the game because as you can see we already have four ships dead in about five or six minutes there um, another part of the game besides getting caps and supporting your teammates is not dying <laughs> sometimes you will allow your teammates who have a little bit better understanding or you know better concealment or whatever a, a better chance to win if you simply don't die survival rate is something that is you know we all look at damage and xp and a lot of these things but survival rate and just not dying in five minutes if you're not making it to the halfway point in games you're probably not angling correctly or putting your ship in the proper position but again we, we bring this all up because this game comes down to the wire and it gets pretty close here but here i actually I shouldn't have done this, but I decide to make a team play as this Helena actually gets me hit. Uh, he, he was angling in, and we do decide to go ahead and set him a smokescreen. <laughs> the, the battleship was actually shooting at him and, and hit us <laughs> as a result. But the Helena is kind of stuck in the middle here, and we do want to be a team player. I preach that a lot. And we don't really, we didn't necessarily, you know, need our smokescreen. But seeing as how the Helena is an American cruiser, he does have good AA as well as a good amount of DPM. Him being alive to kind of rain on these battleships and cruisers over here would definitely be beneficial to us. So we set him a smoke screen in the middle there. And I wouldn't recommend this play too often because I, if I'm just being honest, that the player base is not intelligent enough to utilize it correctly. You will see battleship players who's, you, you do have a smoke firing penalty. And what that means is even if you are in smoke, if you shoot and a ship is close enough, let's say for destroyers it's 2.4 kilometers for cruisers it's seven and this is just an average for battleships it's like 15 with the exception of the italians uh due to their recent buff but uh you know <laughs> so you will see battleship players in smoke so a play i decided to make and the helena actually use you know utilizes it pretty well uh, but a play that i wouldn't necessarily recommend making too often here we we actually definitely could have used our smoke as this carrier decides to kind of hover over us and you don't have the best aa uh, and you can see that georgia who is doing what i preach very often i believe that was the georgia i think it was the same color shell tracers uh decides to throw a few salvos our way and here if i was actually giving myself you know pluses or minuses i would probably give myself a minus in this category meaning we didn't really trade any effective hp uh, our constellation did get a, sh a good shot on that anchorage or whatever it was that cruiser over there uh, but we traded nearly what seven eight thousand hp for like two thousand off of that that cruiser and that's just not an effective trade now of course we were spotted due to the carrier but again you, you want to make sure that you're trading hp effective but as i pointed out on stream you can kind of see we have an odin which is a german brawling battleship and a constellation i will give the constellation a little bit of credit but the odin could have positioned himself a lot better uh, if it's halfway through, uh, it, there's only five minutes left. If there's five minutes left in a game and you have full health, all of your health as a battleship, and you, it's a close game, you, you didn't position correctly. Again, it's, it's, it's very difficult to point out each and every, you know, there's not a one-size-fits-all approach to Legends, but as you can see, this Odin is behind an island here, not really helping us whatsoever. But are, we are going to work our way into this cap here as the Helena decides to go out, and we are now down on ships, especially with a Baltimore, I think it was a Suzuya or an Otago out on the flank there, and a carrier. We are not necessarily in a great spot. 
But we're going to go ahead and kind of gain this defensive position here as we point out where we think the Suzuya is. And in the meantime, we're actually going to try and gain a defensive position here against these ships. Uh, I believe the Suzuya is coming around. We have that Baltimore, which does have a radar, and we have a Kaga over there. So we're going to try and get this cap and then turn out and turn away from any potential damage. Now, if the Suzuya, I, I'm going to be honest, there were a few paid actors on both teams. You can look at our Odin and the enemy Suzuya and York. But if the Suzuya had pushed around, we probably would have been in a little bit more of a difficult position. But we're paying attention to Twisted Track, and it's just kind of hovering behind that island. I'm not sure what the Suzuya was doing, but he definitely did not manage his HP and his DPM potential as well as he could have. But you can see that is cap number three, so unless all of our teammates die, including our carrier, which actually is kind of in a good spot, all things considered, then we should get this win. I also know what you're thinking, Aaron. Why have I watched this game? You only have 23,000 damage. Well, we actually end with a pretty decent damage total, and that is because we have been waiting for our opportunities. This Kaga has moved in trying to maybe get the cap or get a closer plane deployment, as well as this Georgia, because why did they have to move in? Because we got the caps. This, I love when a video kind of comes full circle here. I also want you guys to pay attention to those torpedoes. Um, they become important in, in just a few seconds here. Uh, but we actually put them behind the white line. And you guys see me do that a lot, and I know it's kind of a meme that Aaron misses torpedoes. But the reason that I sometimes miss torpedoes is because I guess what a player is going to do, especially with longer range torpedoes, you don't know what a player is going to do in the you know 60 seconds that it takes sometimes for those torpedoes to get to target. And the reason being, and, and the reason that I will miss sometimes is, I guess I, I made a prediction that the Georgia, show, you know, seeing that he has shown some intelligence by shooting at a destroyer and trying to reposition and get the caps as we get the torpedo kill, that he was going to slow down. It does not make logical sense for a battleship to continue as we <laughs> kind of meme chat here. Um, it doesn't make sense for a battleship to sail in a straight line if you know what you're doing, which is why last night some guy got mad at me when I was just like, you know, who just sails in a straight line? He's like, oh, and I don't think he, I think he took it more offensive than I meant it. I, I didn't really mean it like that, but I'm guessing what somebody will do instead of sometimes what they do do. As, eh, I said, I said do do again, but that is my logic and reasoning behind sometimes why I either drop torpedo short, long, etc. As we are closing out this game here, you can see that this Suzuya is still behind this island. And as I said earlier, if he would have come out, this game probably could have had a different outlook. But he is deciding that he wants to DPM from behind an island, which is absolutely how you should play the, the ship if the game is not, if you're not losing the game. He, he is actively throwing this game for his team. I'm not sure if he doesn't know how to angle or if he's been dev struck so many times, but the carrier decides to come out because I believe he knows he had to get a cap. That or his autopilot messed up, but the carrier, both carriers actually did show a decent amount of intelligence by trying to get, you know, attacks on destroyers, you know, appropriate targets, etc. But uh, down goes the Kaga, and we only have two ships, two service ships, and another destroyer to deal with. Uh, but that is when our Odin, which was full health three minutes ago, goes down. So just talking about, you know, utilizing your health appropriately is just a, not a great display of that. But you can see that the JG marker here has been a fantastic destroyer throughout this entire game, getting torpedoes on target, a decent amount of gun hits, maybe not the most, you know, damage. But there you can see 4,300 to a broadside Baltimore at 10 kilometers. And that is where you're definitely going to want to sit, you know, in terms of just the, the middle ground of playing this ship, right? Getting AP damage at long range, utilizing island cover, and, and also trying to defend the caps. I'm going to be honest, if I would have spec'd a little bit more into the AP, this next engagement as this Suzuya finally comes out from behind his island here, would have been a lot more fun. Uh, you know, because those salvos which were doing 43, 4400, it's an Otago, sorry, I said Suzuya hold the game, sue me. But here's going to be a perfect display of this AP. We still have a smoke screen left. Now he does decide to angle to us, maybe a, a, a rudder enjoyer, as he actually gets a pretty decent salvo. And that's what we talk about, you know, with kind of managing your health. We do have a little bit of, we have some HP to play with. I, I, I really probably could have died and, and still won this game, but 
in close games like this, you don't want to chance it, right? You don't want to you don't want to leave it up to the randoms. But our carrier actually does a pretty decent job of getting this Otago to turn, which will cause him to go broadside to us. That is another factor that carrier players and even other players don't realize is when your player turns to dodge torpedoes as the Saipan gets a Confederate and a high caliber, so absolutely doing his job, it allows you to get so much more in terms of you know broadside and position but 5,000 damage here and like I said if we would have been specced into the AP a little bit more we probably could have been getting a few citadels but just a perfect display of this ship and what it can be capable of I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now it's not gonna be the most effective in terms of damage output you know um, and overall effectiveness as a destroyer especially because we didn't necessarily have it built right but three caps two of which solo there uh, two de three defends Three torpedo hits, three floods, two sinks, and a 3,000 XP. So doing everything is is definitely going to, you know, obviously net you more XP, but just being in the right spots. We actually started at A, and I don't recommend sailing across, but if you'll notice, we actually got every single cap as we went. We kind of just left our team to fight and fend along the way and defended the caps, you know, kind of working our way back across. But let's go ahead and take a look at the stats, commander guide, and modifications of the JG marker here. You can see we are running aiming systems mod 1, propulsion in slot 2 there. We are running concealment, which you could argue for rudder if you're running a full, you know, kind of gun build. And we are running reload, which I do have the range epic reload uh, or epic range mod on my Elbing. So, I, again, two potentially different builds you can kind of play with there but this is just the build we are running also i i didn't really change eric bay but let's go ahead and look at the stats first survivability twenty nine thousand three hundred and sixty. pretty good there but the guns are the selling point of this boat 150 millimeter with 11.9 range and a 5.1 reload uh the ap has a max of four thousand with it with a citadel hit there and this the ap is just really good you have the improved pen angles uh, and, and the AP is, is, is just definitely what you want to choose. Getting full pens on destroyers is, is worth so much more than spamming HE. Now, if you are angled, they, you know, they're completely angled, make sure you do switch to the HE. Torpedoes are pretty mid, if not bad. 8 kilometer max range, 54 knot speed. You have the 1x4 in the middle there and then the 2x2s on each side. So you do get a little bit of versatility if you want to rush, but the, with the 16,000 max damage, you're probably not going to be YOLO torping much besides maybe a destroyer or low health cruiser. Uh, the AA defense is mediocre, although we did get a few, a few planes shot down. And the maneuverability is mid as well with 36 knot top speed, 760 turning circle, which is an atrocious and a 6.9 rudder. Concealment with, you know, certain different build is 5.4, which is definitely on the higher end. Uh, without, look at me now, and with mortar selected, I think it's six kilometers. Here are my uh, stats with all of six games played, so definitely take that with a grain of salt, but uh, pretty decent gun accuracy, torpedo accuracy, LOL, um, and decent average XP. Trek damage isn't too much, and damage isn't great, uh, but you're a destroyer, so uh, it's that the damage output should definitely be a little bit higher with your gun. Uh, so yeah, guys, I am a bot because I actually didn't uh, go over the commander in my little refilming here, and I am at work, so I'm unable to do that. Uh, but there is the commander, Eric Bay. Uh, what is that? Observant Rage, look at me now. Twist and Track, uh, the fourth perk slot. I forget what that one is. And then Unstoppable. This is not the most effective build. I'm going to say that right now, but as you saw, we were rather effective regardless as I'm going over the armor of a destroyer, which is truly irrelevant. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the JG marker there. They are the Renaissance or, you know, heavy destroyers, light cruisers in a sense without a citadel. So similar to Elbing, uh, which is actually a really fun ship and a ship I think I'm going to revisit soon. Uh, just trying to catch those broadside cruisers. But for, you know, don't forget that you still have a role to fulfill as a destroyer, getting those caps. And as we just you know, showed in that game, you can still be very effective, uh, you know, even without having max concealment or, or whatever you, you, you might, as a lot of my IJN Shima enjoyers like to think. But anyway, that's the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey, run out. Peace.